Neptown Tuner here, like and subscribe. And this video will be tearing down this old Montgomery Ward chainsaw. I still remember going into the department store Montgomery Ward as a kid. It was an interesting store. This is also a Remington saw. This is originally a Remington saw. The Montgomery Ward is a rebrand name. Does it have a date on here? It's got to be at least 50 years old. It's pretty heavy. It's got some heft to it. There's no chain break. There's no safety. I got this thing from Goodwill Outlet Store. And I don't know what the cylinder looks like. It's got maybe relatively decent compression. You see, it doesn't really engage the way it should. There's paws in here in this recoil that aren't really pulling out. You have to pull it really fast for them to engage. If you pull it kind of slow, it won't really engage. I didn't know if that's how this saw was originally designed or made. If you had to pull it fast, I do know that it's got a compression release on it. So that's kind of interesting for a saw that's so small. Um, does it even say the engine size on here? Um, I don't even see the engine size on here. We do have the carburetor adjustment screws right here on the side of the body. Right there. And the carburetor. Of course, it's going to be underneath this plate. This isn't some cheap, chintzy plastic stuff. This is like magnesium. And then we've got the air filter right here. Air filter is a nice unit with, we've got some mesh in here. This looks like a reusable type air filter. Not only that, we've got another air filter directly over the carburetor. Now, I've already had this off before. I could probably order a carburetor kit for this thing. All I, You know, I worked on small engines before for a living. Um, I worked at a place called Repower. They worked on commercial outdoor power equipment. Um, they, they sold Still and Echo and uh, Walker mowers and um, they, uh, Skag and Xmark and uh, a few others. But anyway, we got the throttle. See that? We got the choke. And the compression release is right here, I believe. No, compression release. Okay, you pull it out for the compression release. I poured some old fuel in there before. Hmm. Let's just start tearing this thing down. So first we can take this off. Let's uh Let's take this bar off first. I was even looking at the patent. There's a patent number on this right here. I was reading up on it. There's a bearing inside this bar. This is a pretty thin bar as well. This chain is pretty thin, but the patent for this bar said that this bearing makes the bar itself last two to three times longer because most of the wear will happen in this nose. Is that true? Most of the newer saws, as far as I know, do not have this bearing in here. So, First let's, uh, first, let's take off this cover, which as far as I can tell, it looks like it's just these two bolts. They've been off a few times before. This is all I should need right here. This is some standard sockets. And I've got this nice little finger ratchet that I just bought today. Don't you like using tools that you just purchased? I do. That's going to be a uh, 
going to be one that's not on here. It's going to be a half inch. Apparently, I don't have the half inch one on here. You know why that is? Because 13 is close enough to half inch. And uh, apparently, I got to go get it. So here we have the 13. This is a Matco Semi Deep. Really, it's supposed to be a half inch. A 13 is just a tad on the loose side. A half inch is just a little bit tighter, but it should be close enough. Let's see how it. Boy, that's tight. That was pretty snug. Let's see if I can spin this like a thumb wheel. You know, I'd rather. On something like this, I'm more inclined just to grab the socket than try to spin the top of it. That's how I feel. That's a lot more comfortable to just go like this and spin the socket. I really like the semi deeps. So these are lock nuts. They're crimped. They're supposed to stay in place. Now we can pull this cover off. There was a couple washers here on the outside. Set that right here. Now, this should slide in and out like this. Now, how do you tighten it? There's usually some type of tool that you can, there's usually some type of mechanism that you tighten it with. Now the adjustment to tighten this chain is actually this flathead screw right here. So I see that locates to a pin right here. So you would tighten the screw down in the front and that would pull the slack. It would pull it would pull this whole bar forward. So with with this guard off then we don't need to loosen the chain, it can just come off naturally. Now I noticed this uh, clutch right here says it's made in Canada. There's the bar. Really pretty thin. Now we can take a better look at this bearing. Bearing still feels good, but there is some wear. You see the wear right here at the end of the bar? That metal's just a little bit torn up right there, and it's a little bit torn up in the top as well. Now what's next? It's pretty dirty. Some old vintage wood right here. Let's see if this will come off right here. All right, let's uh take this clutch bell off. Spins the engine over fairly easily. Now this has a long extension on it, so that's going to take away some of the torque. But I'm going to try number three on this fuel quarter drive impact. This is an M12. We're going to put the impact socket on it. And of course the engine is just spinning over freely, so I'm, I'm counting on the speed to take it off. And it did. It didn't spin the engine over one time. Now this, uh, I'm going to go ahead and so I just spun the bolt right back on or the nut. I spun the nut right back on so I could just pull it easily off so I didn't have to bang it out of my socket.
Now, let's take a look at what we got. We got a washer. And then we have the clutch basket. And then we have a washer underneath that. Now this is just like any other clutch as far as I'm aware. This is a centrifugal type clutch where once it goes fast enough, these weights come out right here. They grab on this bell. And then once the speed is fast enough, and these pull out far enough it's like a drum break and it spins this whole deal right here and uh, the gear is actually inside this washer type mechanism normally the newer saws don't have like an outside uh, washer like this you just have the gear itself so this is a little bit of an interesting you can see the gear right here but it's kind of built into this track There's probably a special socket that goes right in here where these two uh, semicircles are on either side of the clutch. That way there's no chance of damaging these surfaces right here. Try just a hammer and a chisel just to see if I can't bust it loose and just with this compression of the engine. so. So before I mess that up, we're just going to go ahead and take off the recoil side and I might be able to hold the flywheel and then get that clutch off an easier way. Go ahead and use the flathead screwdriver though. Let's see if it fits. I barely get to use this thing. I want to use it. Oh man, that's tight. That's really tight. millimeter socket oh it came out easy now right here this is in the way if I can get this one maybe that was a tight fit now let's just go ahead and get this bar off if we can you see there's a flathead right here. It's already been taken out before. That was kind of tight. There was an interesting lock washer on there. Now we've got another flathead right here. Let's see if this one will come out. It's already been taken out before as well. It's got a little bit of damage on it. It's tight. go and the handles like off. It's just one more so there was just three holding this on right here now this wire right here goes to this on off switch Just pull it off. And 
this mechanism right here looks over complicated. It's got springs and paws. No wonder why it was so silly to try to get to engage. We have a nice ignition coil right here. This is like a brake line type oil that we've got here for the bar, I guess. This is where you fill the, the bar oil right here. Before I take this flywheel off, I'm going to try to hold the engine with this flywheel so I can get this clutch off. And the clutch is righty Lucy. So I want to hold the flywheel like this. I need to be really careful holding the flywheel with something because I could break these fins. I think that'll work right there though. That'll that'll block the flywheel. I'm gonna try pliers to get this clutch off. So we're gonna try like this. The problem is making sure that I get this flywheel held, which is proving to be difficult. There we go. There goes the clutch. Holding the flywheel with a chisel. Now, I wouldn't typically do that because you could damage... I don't think I did damage this clutch, but... You could damage that clutch by uh, slipping. You see, this is just springs right here. And if it goes fast enough, these weights pull out on these springs. And that's what grips on the inside of this bell right here. Doesn't take much. Now we've got this washer on the inside. You always want to make sure you know which way stuff goes. So I would have, of course there is witness marks. You can see that it goes this way, but you don't know if it's indexed or whatever. You always have to pay attention to stuff before you take it off. Now, let's go back to this other side and I think we can go ahead and get this flywheel off next. So we're going to get this half inch right here, and I severely doubt this impact will do it, but especially with that extension on there, we're going to find out. Oh man, that was easy. Easy work. Now this is another difficult thing to get loose without damaging. I'm going to just simply take my screwdriver in here and give it some love taps from the top. And now I don't want to go any more than that. And uh, well, this part came off. And if you'll notice, there's an area right here for a specific polar. You would have to have this uh, very specific little flywheel polar that it probably wouldn't take much to come up with a polar specialized for that and also you know you could spray a little bit of lube right here in this keyway and that would help you out but just very carefully
I've pretty much already broke it loose. I, lo I know a lot of people are going to be mad at me for the way I'm doing this, but it's coming loose. Look at that. So what I did was I put this in this side. So there's extra force pulling up on this side. So instead of doing anything over here, I just hit down where it was pried up. And that, that's going to give you that seesaw action that you need to break it off the keyway. So now I got it off the keyway. That's what the back of it looks like. And now we have the points and condensers underneath this flywheel right here. So uh, what I'm going to do is... Slide this to the side. And we can get this cover off. We can take a look at what this looks like in here. Now this keyway right here theoretically needs to come out. So there's a little there's a little keyway in that crankshaft. I'm just gonna take my chisel and you're not really going to be able to see it unfortunately I'm going to take my chisel and just barely tap it out that's not wanting to come out unfortunately So it finally did come out. This is what it looks like. Just a little half moon right there. And it pretty much came out perfect. There's just a couple little nicks on it on the top. If I needed to reuse this, I could. I could just take a small file and clean it up. And now we can get this gasket right here off of it. Now we can take a look at these points right here. Now, it's going to be difficult to spin this engine over and show you these points because both of these, the clutch and the flywheel, are missing. But what I can probably do is spin it over with this clutch here. And these points, the points are right here. They're going to open and close. You see that? So this old style ignition needs the points and the condensers. So it would be very common to have to replace the condenser and to set your points. Is that all of it? There we have it. I'm just going to disconnect the spark plug wire back here. I don't know if I have enough room to pull this out or not. The spark plug wire is right there. It does not look like it pulls through. Sometimes you can disconnect the coil wire at the coil. In this case, we can't. Sometimes you take the cap off right here. This cap sometimes unscrews. Right there, see that? The cap just came off. And then we have just a little spike right here. And that goes through the the top of the spark plug and then we can pull this ignition coil out like this 
once we take the cap off of it. And that's the whole ignition system. Now, we have a nice little engine right there. Let me see if I can get this clutch back off. Reverse thread. Let's go ahead and take this muffler off next. And that's also this 8 millimeter or 5 sixteenths. But this one is a little bit chewed up. I'm not even able to get it on there, really. There we go. Okay, now this cap will come off. I'm going to get that cap off there. Then we have this screen right here. Little gasket type deal. We have a screen. Then we have some screws underneath it. There's some screws right here. Are those eight millimeter as well? They really don't look like it. I guess they are. There goes the whole muffler. Now we can take a look at the piston condition. We can always do that with a two stroke. Let's see what the piston looks like through that exhaust. But so we do have some scoring on that piston. It doesn't look extremely healthy. We're going to tear it all the way down, so you're going to get a better look at that. Next thing we're going to do is take these screws out right here, this case. So to do that, I guess this is just chock full of uh, grime here because I can't even see this bolt. It is tucked under there once I got that grime out of there. Okay, there's one. Another one tucked in here. This is a really nice impact. I'm liking it. doing everything I need to do even with that extension on there. Now this whole side of the engine should come off I would think if that's all there is to it. There might be something else I don't know but I'm just gonna give it some love taps right here. And that's all it is. It comes right off. There is the oil line right here. Is that what that is? We've got the oiling line that goes up through here. And I just saw that. So Actually, that's the compression release. That's the compression release here. So how do we get that loose? Or maybe, no, that is the bar and chain oil. I don't know if it's supposed to come up like this and you're supposed to be able to get it with a wrench like this or what, but I'm just going to go ahead and use my massive size Knipex right here and see if I can bust this loose. 
and go like this. It's way overkill, but it worked. Now I'm getting some crud inside this engine. So there we go. Got that completely loose. A nice big bearing assembly in here for this crankshaft right here. I don't really see how I would have gotten that line off any other way because that line goes up in here. So I really don't think it would have hurt to bend it out of its way a little bit because you can screw it back in and it, if you were to bolt this back down it would just go right back in but now we can see the crankshaft in here now we've still got the spark plug installed spark plugs right up in here to get this side off we're gonna have to take these filter these uh, flathead screws out so all of these flathead screws will have to come out the side. And then we've got this line right here. Other way. Right here like this. Bust that loose. Get our flathead screwdriver, put that right up in there, and let's give it a go. Got to be really careful with flatheads in the impact. See, it didn't. It wanted to bounce out. It's working though. I think that's all of them. Let's go ahead and just set these to the side. Boy, this is a messy, messy job. There's some nasty old oily wood all over this thing. Now, place to pry. I'm going to give it some love taps right here. fuel's coming out. Now it's still really stuck. It's still really stuck on this bottom side. Like this cover does not want to come off at all. I forgot that I had fuel in there. I 
to pop this out a little bit. And then I need to unscrew this fitting because apparently it goes all the way through. go that's the oil line now let's see if it comes loose it still doesn't want to come loose oh there's one screw there it is one screw underneath that it was this one right here now it's loose it was that one the whole time There it goes. I gotta go dispose of this uh, oil and gas. So let's get started again with our impact. We're gonna start with this bottom here. And get this eight millimeter out the handle or 5 sixteenths rather. Looks like we gotta get this carburetor off. Oops. This isn't gonna quite fit. Alright, I convinced myself it's not gonna fit. Screwdriver out for this one. just this bracket right here that held the air filter over the carburetor. Now what we really need is a 8 millimeter wrench or 5 16 wrench. What we can use is see if this will fit. This has a ratchet wrench side on it. It's actually 5 16 or 8 millimeter. So we can put it in like this and ratchet wrench it out. All we need to do is get it loose and then we can thumb them out like this. Let's see how long these bolts will be. These are gonna be some long-winded bolts but we probably don't need to take them all the way out. So this will allow us to pop this carburetor off, I would think. Okay, we still, maybe it's just stuck. So I'm going to take this screwdriver, give it a little, yep, there we go. Just pushed it off just a little bit. And now we need to get these lines out of here. I'm not bending these, I just have to move it around a little bit and then we can get this uh, choke and this throttle line out. And now we've got those long bolts that we can take out. We've got four bolts right here. We're going to see if this whole Klein will get in there. It will not. It's too fat. The head's too fat. But we can get our socket right here and we're going to put it on this easy red and now that has enough clearance. You see that? There's enough clearance there. Because this is a 
little bit ratchet and it's got a very very micro head to it See, I bent this over right here, and that gave me some extra leverage to push my fingers on with. Most ratchets would not fit in there, because most ratchets are going to have a, a bigger head than that. You see, that's just a little 516 socket. That's a little micro ratchet. I love that thing. See, this is even a small head on here, but that's a lot bigger. That's a lot bulkier than this little easy red. What are you going to do? Get a little stubby screwdriver in there? That's a difficult situation without this tool. I'm just holding I'm just holding the socket as a thumb wheel because I can't really get my finger in the back of this thumb wheel. That's all the way loose there. Now what else do we have? Is that it? Or is there something else? We're gonna give it we're gonna give it a little love tap with the screwdriver. So it feels like there's something else. Maybe maybe that flathead screw right here. We're just gonna go ahead and take that out. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and load up my little mini screwdriver here. This is a little Hazet mini screwdriver. Look at that. Will that fit? Sure will. Now we can push this all the way out right there. There's not a whole lot to grip onto with that small handle, but it works. see what happens that's nothing that didn't give me nothing so I'm gonna give it some love taps with the hammer right here There we go. That's all it took. The top is separated, but this bottom... There we go. What I've got is this lever right here that's hanging up, and I really don't see... I, 
I really don't see that it's anything that's connected. Let's try to give it a little bit of a pry to see what... Yeah, I don't think it was connected. So we're just going to give it a couple more taps, this time on this other side. There we go. There's the back of the body, and there's the engine. Now we're all the way down to the cylinder head. And we can take these nuts off right here to pull the cylinder head off. So let's set this to the side. Now we're going to have to get a wrench for this. So I got this little slim line forged in the USA 7 16 and that's what we're going to use because we really have to have something slim like that. See, see how, see how that needs to fit in there and be real slim. A thicker one would not fit in there. So, and it fits just perfect. It's almost like that is specifically designed for something like this. On this side we could run we could run a whole socket extension and stuff down into here but and that's what we're gonna have to do on this last one because on this last one I cannot fit a wrench in there you see that wrench will not fit so for that one we're gonna have to get our 7 16 right here with How long of an extension are we going to need? Will that work? Well, that's a 3 8. Here's the 7 16. I'm going to put that in there. And then this time we're going to use the fixed easy red. See, that's not the swivel. Not that it matters, but. Flip this, flip this lever. There we go. Let's take this back off. this right here stick it in the end of that because I can't really get to that there we go that comes right out now this jug should pop off as long as these bolts are all the way out we're gonna give it some gentle love taps I know you're not gonna like this it didn't do anything to it you see I've got some experience with a hammer believe it or not And this one's going to have to come off a little bit more once we got it loose. They're all loose. And there we are. There's the jug. And here's the piston. Look at those piston rings. They were completely lined up. Gaps are gaps are perfectly aligned, which that's not really supposed to happen. There's some decent scrapes right here. Hear that? My nail digs in. 
You have a nice little, nice little crankshaft here. Let's see if it'll. What I could do is I could unbolt this right here and slide the crankshaft out. Like I could go ahead and just tap it loose. I'll go ahead and uh, should I get that out? I don't have enough room on this. This head's too bulky to fit in there. Let's try this. Easy red. Yeah, it's still too bulky. Let's try this little VIM ratchet and see if that fits. Still too bulky. We need an actual quarter drive ratchet. What we could do is we could take this piston out, but I'm going to try to just break this loose with pliers. I think it's spinning. All right, it did come loose. Okay, I got that one loose. There we go. Busted the second one loose. My pliers. And there we have it. There's little needle bearings in there. Look at that little connecting rod. That piston. Now let's get this crankshaft out of here. little individual little individual needle bearings that's a cute little crankshaft if I ever saw one alright like and subscribe no I'm not putting this back together and rebuilding it needs a new piston a carburetor kit maybe a carburetor uh, the, the cylinder his old junk Literally, the cylinder is scored up. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. But. It's a cute little engine.